Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron, and we're back tonight with another mech review. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at the Griffin GRF-1N. Uh, this is a special request from one of our subscribers, WTTNC Frep. So thanks for the recommendation. Uh, the Griffin is a staple uh, classic mech design, pretty much been in, I think, every box set I can, I can think of. Uh, this one dates back to the very beginning, so it'll be really exciting to check this one out. Uh, armed with a PPC and an LRM-10, we'll see how it stacks up. Considering we just did the Wolverine, it'll be interesting uh, to kind of take a look at these guys side by side. So stay tuned. The review of the Griffin is coming right up. All right, guys, let's get this kicked off. So the Griffin 55-ton Intersphere Media Mech, uh, the specific Griffin variant we're going to be looking at is the 1N, uh, and this mech has been around since the Age of War. So it's a very venerable design, built in 2443, and remains in service all the way through uh, to the Renaissance. You'll find this thing even beyond that, um, but primarily a lot of these mechs were refitted uh, after that Helm Memory Core was discovered. Um, the Griffin is a very mobile design, so it, it has a run speed of 8, has jump jets, uh, packs 12 heat sinks, armor pretty good, 82.2% coverage, uh, so that, that's 9.5 tons in total. Um, and you can see in the middle there, the distribution is, is a little weird. Um, it's totally packed solid on the side torsos, um, but the CT not at 100%, um, so some interesting armor distribution choices there, but still... Um, the mech is pretty well protected. From an armament perspective, it has a shoulder-mounted LRM-10, uh, and it carries a PPC in the right arm, uh, and the ammo for that LRM-10 is carrying two tons that is packed in the right torso uh, where that LRM-10 is located. All right, so on to the offensive benchmark. So first, let's take a look at the baseline damage output for this mech, and we'll also take a look at the heat and red line output. So as far as baseline goes, this mech was able to deliver 75.1 points of damage. Um, it's not astronomical, uh, but it also does not have a whole lot of weapons on tap, just those two um, that we just spoke of. So the baseline damage is fairly consistent. Um, it's, you can see though on the baseline, that's the white area, it's very peaky, right? It kind of trends up, trends down, trends up, trends down. Whenever you see that very wavy line, that typically is indicative of a heat load issue. Um, and this mech, again, only is packing 12 heat sinks. The PPC builds up 10 in one shot. Factor in movement, firing that LRM-10. Um, this mech has the capability to get hot very quickly. Um, and we can see that heat ramp basically kicks in uh, immediately. Um, so as soon as that PPC comes into play at 18 inches, um, you can see that heat is just incrementing regularly every turn. So, um, you know, beware of that. Now, in terms of the optimized damage output, now you can kind of play with the numbers a little bit. You can push this mech again. Whenever you see a mech that can generate a lot of heat, it means it can do more damage. And so, you know, we can push the mech a little bit here and there, and you can see uh, in that second area chart where the blue optimized average calculated damage starts to eclipse the baseline. Uh, and that's around again, you know, our, our turn three, turn, uh, what is that, turn six, so on and so forth, right? Um, and so when we squeeze the mech for a little bit more heat, that optimized damage is able to increase to 86.2. Um, it's not a tremendous output increase. It's a little over 10%, but it's better than nothing. So in terms of our weapons groupings at the bottom, um, you can see, again, you know, most of the time, um, the same weapons, there's only two, right? They're being fired in almost all positions. However, in the optimized grouping, you are firing that LRM-10 a lot more. Um, than you normally would and you're taking on that extra heat. So not much to say on the offensive side here um, in terms of just raw damage output. In terms of lethality, um, this mech did eh, mediocre. Um, so it was able to kill the target 31% of the time. And again, the, the target in our lethality simulator is a javelin. Um, so 31% of the time, it's able to take that javelin down. 69% of the time, that javelin walks um, and again, if we look at the total damage output per hit, that's the yellow bar, we're at 6.71. That seems high, right? It's got that big PPC, 
and then it's got some you know LRMs right which are variable damage and it sort of averages all that out so 6.71 is respectable um, but it's barely generating any critical hits right you've only got at most three things hitting the you know the PPC and then potentially up to two clusters of LRMs so you don't really have the opportunity to just spray and pray and and hope for something you know good happening um, it's just again that that low number of weapons even though that PPC has got a bite um, it just doesn't generate the crits. Uh, time to kill on this mech was 19.8. That's unfortunately the worst we've seen to date. Um, again, attributed to the fact that it just doesn't have a whole lot of firepower to bring to bear. This mech has really good mobility um, and it has you know really good armor, uh, but in the offensive department, uh, it's not it's not that great. Now defensively, uh, it's a very different story. Uh, this mech, again, very mobile, so you can see it can claim that plus three movement modifier, um, even taking on a movement penalty, whether it's from heat, whether it's from turning, or whatever it might be. Uh, it does have those jump jets as well, so even if you're overheated from, uh, you know, and you're, you're afraid of stacking movement penalties, you can still claim that plus three um, by jumping at your full distance. Um, so, again, mobility is really good. This mech's going to be hard to hit, and with that high armor coverage, it'll be a little tough to take down. Um, in terms of our motive hits, so we saw 26.2% uh, in terms of motive hits, and to me that's a little bit high for this mech, and, and the reason is is the legs are just slightly under armored, um, and so that's going to hamper its ability to claim that plus three modifier over time. If we look at the cumulative survivability on the bottom right hand of your screen, you'll notice that the trend line for motive hits far out, out uh, exceeds and outpaces um, the amount of times that this mech was actually killed. Um, so speaking of deaths, back to the left side there, that second donut chart um, shows that this mech only died 18.3% of the time. That's really good. Um, and it's being uh, shot at by an awesome. So it's taking three PPCs almost every turn. You know, occasionally that awesome has to fire two to cool off a little bit. Um, but it only died 18.3% of the time. Um, and almost half of those deaths are attributed to ammunition kills for that LRM-10. Um, so overall, this mech is really tough, and that is not only just a factor of its armor, but also its speed as well. So on to the efficiency analysis. Uh, so this is, again, um, when you see that big wavy type of diagram, um, the area chart rather, like we see here, um, you can tell immediately that this mech has some heat issues. Um, so overall, not much difference between our optimized and effective ACD. Again, this mech survived so much. Uh, we didn't actually um, we didn't actually see much of a loss. In fact, it was I think it was less than five percent, or maybe a little more than five percent, right around five percent. Let's just say that. Um, but the effective ACD was actually higher than its baseline output, which you very rarely see. Um, so you know the mech in that respect is very reliable. So you know you can always count on it. You can count on it quite a bit um, to do consistent damage, even if it isn't that high. Um, and so overall, when we blend the damage with the survivability and we take a look at its battle value, which is 1272 in this case, we get that efficiency score. And for this mech, it scored a little bit below average at a 4.59. Um, so on to the right, we can look at the sensitivity of, of gunnery, um, sensitivity of the mech 2 gunnery score. Um, and so the first line really represents, that line chart represents, what does my efficiency look like at higher or lower gunnery levels? And then that bar represents, you know, what's my sensitivity. Um, so overall, this mech obviously is going to pick up a little bit of effectiveness from gunnery 2 to gunnery 1. But really, the biggest jumps you're going to see are G4 to G3, and then, you know, G3 to G2. Um, that's a pretty consistent slope between those three points. Um, but overall, the trend is about 0.5 uh, in terms of gunnery sensitivity, which isn't very high. Um, it's about average. So... You know, playing this mech around G3, G2 is probably, um, I think it'll do, it'll do just fine. Um, and if you look at the bottom, what you'll see is when you start to drop the gunnery score below three, you really get a flat curve on sort of the back four turns. Anything above 14 inches, anything beyond really 12 inches, um, you're not going to get a good return on investment because you're stacking those long range mods um, on top of really bad gunnery. And so you're not going to be able to use this mech at range where it's probably going to make up uh, most of its damage deficit um, to give you a little bit more return on investment. So, you know, again, my, my opinion is I'd be playing this mech at Gunnery 2. If you plan on keeping this mech deep in the backfield and using it as a fire support mech, 
um, would absolutely uh, recommend upgrading it to a you know G2 or a G1 if, if you play that low. Um, so that's gunnery score. All right, so now we're gonna dive into our role analysis. Um, so first we're gonna kick off with uh, some of the key metrics that we gathered from this Battleitics analysis engine. Uh, the optimized average calculated damage for this mech, 86.2. Uh, damage per hit was 6.71. Survival rate, 81.8%. Again, very good. Same deal with mobility and movement. So it's a 585, uh, very good. The red line heat that this mech was able to generate was 186. That means the number of uh, points of heat it was able to generate cumulatively from you know turn one all the way to turn 12 in our simulation in our red uh, red line benchmark. The efficiency score panned out to be a 4.59, and the sensitivity to gunnery score was about 0.5. Um, and so moving over uh, to the yellow bars there, looking at the report card for this mech offensively out of five, right, uh, it scored a 2.5. Defensively, a four out of five. Mobility, 3.5 out of five. Control, which is how difficult it is to manage the heat load, uh, is at a 2.0. And efficiency is just a little bit under average at 2.5. Um, so overall, not terrible. Again, very strong in the mobility and the defensive side. Not real great on the offensive output side. Um, that's probably where it could use a little bit of help if you're gonna mod this mech. So, threat assessment. Let's talk about the threat of this mech before we dive into the combat roles. Um, so on the bottom left, what are we looking at? So the dark red bars represent the maximum damage output. Uh, this is if you roll, you hit with everything, you do maximum damage, what does it look like? And so what you can see is as soon as it hit, hits 18 inches when that PPC comes into range, you're, you've plateaued, you've maximized your damage. Um, and then when you look at your average calculated damage, which factors in, you know, your chance to hit, right, and what's your average damage going to look like, you know, over uh, multiple hits, uh, and or multiple shots, I should say, hits and misses, you can see that that kind of climbs and peaks at six inches, which is, um, you know, short range for that PPC, um, and also just one within the minimum range of the LRM. And then once you start getting to five to four, and then once you hit three and two, when you're within minimum range of the PPC, and the minute the LRM is well within minimum range, you can see that damage just plummets. Um, and so the yellow line represents for us um, the ratio of the damage that we could do versus the damage that we are likely to do um, divided by the amount of heat that these weapons are generating, right? So um, usually this line tells us where the mech is gonna be most, uh, most dangerous, right? The most firepower you can bring to bear um, with the least amount of heat. Um, and so this mech, because it has such a limited arsenal and already has heat problems to begin with, that yellow line almost trends exactly with its average calculated damage maximum. Um, and so what do we see here? Well, uh, if I'm playing this mech, I'm really gonna keep it within the 14, probably 14 to seven inch range, you know, dip into six inches if you have to, to get that PPC into short range. Um, but really, this mech is not super great as a fire support mech. It can do the job, um, but you know, uh, it, it's not phenomenal. Um, but it, it's a good hit and run mech. Um, and you know, it's tough, right? So when we think about uh, the rolls going up back up to the top, I guess we can talk about the threat envelope for a minute. So threat envelope, again, such minimum weapons, uh, minimum small number of weapons rather, there's really not much to say here. Uh, just a little bit in the in the rear right arc. I mean, again, great range on both weapons, um, but just not really doing a whole lot uh, in terms of uh, coverage. It's got a couple of blind spots on that left side um, for sure. Um, so anyway, back up the rolls. Um, so when I think about playing this mech, uh, number one role for this mech is a skirmisher role. Um, again, I don't think it has enough firepower to bring to bear to be a dedicated fire support mech. Uh, I would still play it as a fire support mech, um, but really I think skirmisher is where it's at get it out on a flank, run it up and down the field. Um, you don't want to get too close, but you don't want to be too far away. Just sit in that sweet spot, go after objectives, go after annoying enemy mechs. Um, you know, I mean, again, it's got that PPC. So if you have an enemy target that, you know, that's got head damage already, I mean, just go, you know, go head hunting. See if you get the 12, um, it can happen. So, you know, skirmisher roll is great for this, uh, for this type of mech and it's tough enough to be out and be alone and take some punishment 
um, and it has enough LRM 10 ammo, probably more than it really needs in a normal game, um, you know, to, to stay out there unsupported. So Skirmisher is my number one choice for this mech. Fire support, I guess, is my second. I don't know, maybe tied with Defender. I mean, it does have a couple long range weapons, but it just doesn't have like the threat generation that you'd really want, you know, when you have a longbow or an archer or even a Whitworth. I don't know. It just doesn't seem to have that same bite, um, but you can definitely play it in there. I mean, even when you compare it to something like a Whitworth, I mean, technically the Whitworth is probably doing less damage, but it can sustain fire where this mech really cannot sustain fire. That's the key difference that PPC gets so hot. Um, you know, a pair of LRM-10s versus an LRM-10 and a PPC, very different um, in terms of heat capabilities and damage capabilities, admittedly, as well. PPC is a better choice, but that heat just kills this mech. So it's difficult for it to remain in a sustained fire support role. Um, so Defender, also a great choice. This mech can dig in, it can shoot. Um, I, you know, I'm reticent to kind of put it in this role because if mechs do get close, um, as you can see on the threat assessment there, the threat ratio just tanks under five inches. Um, so if you get at point blank and you got a couple of commandos or, or whatever swarming you, um, you know this mech's going to struggle to do damage there. So um, you just got to be careful about the placement of this mech and make sure that it has some brawlers or some picket mechs able to screen for it um, to pick up some of those close range guys. But um, that said, that is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this review. Looking forward to your comments. And of course, if you have any other recommendations, let us know. I'll put it on the list and we'll go from there. So thanks again for everything and stay tuned for more from Death From Above Wargaming.